Don't you know you got to hang in there And it's rough, I know, cause I've been there Life throws us in You yes, you do. Can't you wait ten more days? Can't you? Well, nobody, nobody waits anymore. Nobody does. I'm waiting. Our God and God of our fathers, bless Leonard Allen Cantro and Lila Ina Kaladny as they unite their lives on this day. May they grow and old. And do you promise to love, in blessing. to honor, and to cherish her in good fortune and in adversity? If so, answer, I do. I do. And do you, Lila, take Leonard to be your husband? And do you Behold. promise to love? Behold. I, Lila. I, Lila. Take thee, Leonard. Take thee, Leonard. With this ring. With this ring. To be my husband. To be my husband. In accordance with... May then the Lord grant you his most precious of gifts, happiness and peace. Amen. 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 We now declare you, Leonard and Lila, husband and wife. My Now, where are you going on your honeymoon? Hawaii. Miami Beach. Sure. Well, I do have a marvelous. Thank you. Thank you. Do I get a chance? No, I have a good one. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my God.
Shift if you do that. Honey, don't, don't, don't do this, honey. It's dangerous. Go ahead. Uh, Go back over here, son. Wow. I just have to be able to shift, honey. It's, it's, Are you glad we waited? Bye, Ellen. Say it. I'm glad we waited. Now we have the rest of our lives. Forty. Fifty. A hundred years. And, and don't, don't make little circles on my chest, okay? Hmm? I like to. I know you like to. I have an incredibly sensitive chest, though. It's I'll make little squares. <laughs> no, really, come on. Uh, nothing. It's my stupid chest. It's just... Okay. I'll just blow on it. <laughs> come on. Okay. Okay. Grouch. Are you going to be grouchy for the next 50 years? Where are you going? TV. 
somebody's mouth and they don't want it. You'll want it later. It'll be in my tummy. Hamburger and a Coke, please. Quiet this morning. I'm always quiet in the morning. I never noticed that before. <laughs> There's a lot of things that you didn't notice about me, and, and a lot of things I never noticed about you. Lenny, look. You gonna see us in 50 years? That's going to be us, isn't it, Lenny? Excuse me. something wrong with There's you. There's nothing wrong. I'm, I'm always quiet in the morning, really. You have a little, um... You have a little, uh... A little, like, egg salad on your face. Is that right? Yeah. I'll call home tonight, okay? Yeah. I told Mom. Sure. Salad, right? You like it? Mmm. I don't know salad in that. That's another thing that you're gonna have to get used to. <laughs> you want a bite? Huh? Thank you. We gotta get going if we're gonna make Georgia. Bye. Just like me, they long to be. It's wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Tell me. Tell me it's wonderful, Lenny. Say it. Say it again. I didn't hear you. I just said it. How many times you want me to say it? If you wouldn't keep asking me so much, you would have heard me say it. It's goddamn wonderful, all right? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said I'm sorry. I don't know what's wrong with you. Nothing. 
You've been acting this way the whole trip. I haven't. I've been a little irritable in Georgia. I was fine in Virginia and Delaware. I just wanted to know how it felt to you. It felt really terrific. It's just... I don't understand why I have to announce it all the time. You don't have to announce it all the time. Just tell me. I have to be reassured. What's wrong with that? It's difficult to give out bulletins in the heat of passion. You hardly said a word to me all night. I'm always quiet at night. You were never quiet before we were married. We never made love before we were married. You fooled around a little bit, but this is all new. It's all new to me, too. You're gonna have to give me about 40 or 50 years. Why do you keep saying 40 or 50 years? We're on our honeymoon. I mean, we're not even out of Georgia yet. Look at Mr. Grouch. Mommy, Mom, help me. I married a grouch. We go down now, we can get a whole afternoon to sun in. Wait, just just two seconds. Just two seconds. Just two seconds. Listen, I'll meet you down there, okay? I'll meet you down in about 10 minutes, okay? Okay.
That's my spot. What? Excuse me? I said you're lying in my spot. This is your spot? Everybody knows that. I didn't know. I'm j I just got here. Oh. I, did, I didn't uh, I move. I, I just got here. Never mind. Just don't do it again. Sounds hard, huh? I just want to get a little tan. You've already been out an hour, and that's a lot to finish there. I know when I've had enough. <sighs> it's hot. It's hot. You feel like a dip? You know I can't swim. You can't swim? I didn't know that. You did, too. How would I know that? I've never been to the beach with you. Well, I guess that's another thing you just found out about me. Hey! Oh, I'm so sorry. Did I get you wet? Oh, no, that's OK. Oh, I'm really sorry. It's OK. I'm going to. Too much sun. Ow! Didn't I say that? I just wanted to get a nice tan. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, it's too late now. You're gonna pop up like a basketball. Ow, 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 ow. I mean, here it is, our honeymoon. I thought we would go to the dog races. I thought we would go to High Lie. I thought we would see some of the big shows and the big hotels. Instead, we're going to sit in the hotel room. You're going to pop up. I'm going to watch television. I won't pop up. I'll put some stuff on you that stops you from puffing up. There's no such thing as that. They haven't invented anything like that. You're going to pop up. You're not going to be a normal person till Wednesday or Thursday. You could be a little more sympathetic. I'm going down to the bar for a bottle of beer. Where are you going? I'm going down to the bar for a bottle of beer. When will you be back? When I finish my bottle of beer. It's our first night in Florida. What difference what night it is? I'm thirsty. Turn the television on. I'll come back after my beer. How's it going? It's Miami. <laughs> I know what you mean. Prices. 
That's my stool. Hi. Did he say you could sit in my stool? I didn't know it was your stool. Would you, would you like to fat? I'll let you know when I do. You a guest at this hotel? Is that what this is? <laughs> I just got in today. I'm Len Cantro. No kidding. <laughs> Can I get you a drink? No. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Come on, Kelly. They're waiting for us. Reservations for 8.30. Gonna be on the beach tomorrow? Oh, yeah, sure. In the morning? Yeah, I don't even have breakfast. I just have some shoes. I put on my trunks and I'm down there. Just make sure you stay off my spot. Thanks for the nut. Did you meet anyone at the bar? What? I said, did you meet anyone at the bar? Who would I meet at the bar? It's just a bunch of jerks here. I don't know. You were gone so long. I thought, you know, maybe you would, you know, <laughs> like you're talking to someone at the bar. No, they don't even get a crowd until midnight. I was, I was alone. I put cream on. It doesn't hurt so much anymore. Maybe tomorrow I could sit in the shade with you for a while? No! You stay out of the shade. I mean, there's sun rays in the shade. You have to stay in a room all day tomorrow. Well, what will you do? I'll, I'll uh, hang around the beach. I'll look at the jerks. I'll, there's a, there's a uh, lot of paperbacks in the lobby. <coughs> To. Oh, where? I'm not rushing anywhere. I just uh, I want to spend a beautiful day like this in bed. You want me to uh, call room service, order you some breakfast or uh, coffee or something? I can do it myself. Yeah. Call room service. Order anything you want. I'll keep checking with you all day long. And uh, you, would, you know something? The best thing I could do is get out of here and leave you alone because the only thing that's going to help you it's time. And cream. Cream and time. Lenny. If I look better by tonight, could we go out someplace for dinner? Absolutely. Anything you want to do, we're going to do it, OK? Anything you want. Well, that's what we'll do. Just take care of yourself, and I'll, uh, I'll check with you all day. The important thing is, is that I, I get out of here, I leave you alone. You'll be, you'll be better off, really. Okay? Oh, hot! It's so hot out here. You're so lucky you have an air-conditioned room. It's so hot out here. Okay. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Excuse me. It's crazy. It's such a rough. It looks crazy. teddy bears on the beach. I didn't see any signs. They're not allowed. 
so just stay off the beach. I mean, what do you want to live in a dumb place like Minnesota for? What's wrong with Minnesota? No, I mean, it's so far from New York. Well, if you and your cute little wife are ever driving through, stop in and say hello. Hey, is there, is there another name that goes with Kelly? Corcoran. Kelly Corcoran. Well, see, now, that, that thing is a girl like you is going to have a name like Kelly Corcoran. What's your cute little wife's name? Lila. Lila? Lila. <laughs> Does Lila come when you call her? No, she's okay. And what's that ring for? <laughs> Held my finger on. I've got leprosy. <laughs> <laughs> you a teddy bear look. Does it bother you if I do that? You can do anything you like. Anything? I think you're ready for my test. Test? You have a test? Terrific. Give me your arm. individuals. Relax. Relax your fingers. Kelly, come on, honey. It's 3 o'clock. Let's go, huh? Sure, Dad. I'll be there in just a minute. Okay? Go ahead. I promise. Be right there. Out. You're checking out today? Daddy doesn't like this place. He doesn't like the element you get here. We're moving to the jockey club until Saturday. Wait, well, wait a second. Wait a second. I've got to see you one more time. I've got to prove something to myself. Well, we're moving to the jockey club. Oh, oh can I see you there? I mean, can I meet you for a drink? I, I'll come over there, like 7 o'clock. We're going out to the Fontainebleau tonight with some Colorado people. Well, I could, I could come over there. I'll stop over there for a drink at 7 o'clock. What about your cute little wife? No, it's okay. A, a, a drink at 7 o'clock, then, okay? Well, if Lila won't let you, you can have my spot on the beach. But you said that we could go out for dinner if the swelling went down. We are. You we're, promised. We're going out for dinner. I already made reservations. 9 o'clock for 2, the best seafood place on the beach. Just have to have this drink with this old army buddy of mine first, honey. 
Imagine running into him on the beach like that. Is, is it so important? Important? He only saved my life, that's all. He pulled me out of a burning barracks in Louisiana in the middle of the night. He pulled six of us out, and the captain. Got a citation. What's his name? His name, Wilmer McCrady. He's a big redneck jerk when it comes to having a conversation, but he's a hell of a handy guy to have around if you're gonna have, need somebody to save your life. He's a big beer drinker. I almost didn't even recognize him. He's got a, he put on a, must have put on about 30 pounds already. He's got a little charter fishing boat business done. Married, three kids. Why, why, why can't the wives come? But to an army reunion? Honey, are you kidding? Do you know what the language would get like at an army reunion? This is a, this is a, a, a very rough guy. He's always got a toothpick in his mouth. <laughs> now look, set your appetite down for a quarter to nine for the terrific Florida lobster and that yummy, yum, yum pecan pie. Okay? Okay? You won't forget me. Oh, honey, come on. How can I forget you? How'd you get away from your cute little wife? It's no problem. I, I can handle that. I know. I wouldn't let you get away with it. Oh, it kind of wraps up why I'm here. Uh, scotch. Uh, Here's the deal. The marriage is off. It was just one of those dumb things I rushed into, like joining the army, except this time I'm not going to wait around three years to get out. I had my doubts in Virginia. I was pretty sure in, in Georgia. You really settled things for me in Florida. I've been waiting for a girl like you all my life. I just timed it wrong. Here's the plan. I'm definitely getting out. I just have to figure out a way to let her down easy. It kind of complicates things. This being our honeymoon and everything. What do you think about what I've said so far? I'm just listening. Can't think if I'm listening. <laughs> Your fantastic way of putting things that really kills me. <laughs> I need some time. Because it's a little difficult. I have to figure out a way to drop the bombshell on the poor kid, you know. When are you going to go back to Minnesota? Saturday. Saturday, the day after tomorrow. Uh-huh. Oh, see, I really have my work cut out for me. I mean, if you saw all the wedding presents and everything. Well, you just make your own decision. We're leaving on Saturday. Listen, don't underestimate me. I'm in this all the way. What about you? Um, I've got to get back to the table. That look in your eye is good enough for me. Would you like to come over and say hello? No, I can't. It's all right. I told Daddy about you. You did about my being married? Well, not about that yet. But he's seen me talking to you. Oh, yeah. What does he think? Oh, he hasn't met you yet, but just from appearances, he doesn't like you. Well, appearances aren't everything, you know. Tilly? 
What do you say, Kelly? How long are you going to be there waiting with a lobster bisque? I was just coming. Daddy, this is Mr. Cantrell. Cantrell, hello, sir. Real <clears throat> pleasure. I'm sorry I detained your daughter. I certainly hope I didn't interrupt your dinner. No, no, no. Come on now, Kelly. Your mother's a nervous wreck. <gasps> Daddy, is it all right if Mr. Cantor joins us for dinner? Please, Daddy. No, no, no. Really, I can't. It's very generous of you, sir. Thank you very much. Not tonight, but perhaps some other time we can have dinner together. Why not? You can drop your bombs later, can't you? Kelly, he said no. He'll come if I ask him to. No, I really have a very pressing appointment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe just a fruit cocktail. to the Minneapolis Symphony, don't we, Dwayne? Is that right, sir? We had Leonard Bernstein last oh, year. Oh, well, you know, I must have seen Leonard Bernstein maybe two, three hundred times. Oh, well, listen, if you're ever out around Minneapolis, you'll be sure and go and see them. You'll, you'll just love it, I know. Well, as a matter of fact, I may be heading in that direction in the very, very near future. Oh, how isn't that nice, Dwayne? What uh, business did you say you were in, young man? Uh, athletic equipment, sir. What? Athletic equipment, uh, sporting goods. Oh, I see. You mean uh, you sell balls and bats, huh? Is that what you mean, balls <laughs> no, and bats? Last year in this country, sir, over $2 billion was spent on recreation. Is that right? On balls and bats. <laughs> Dwayne, if we're gonna shove off at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, we better get in a little bedtime. Yes, yeah, I yeah. guess we better. Oh, look, sir, waiter. Oh, 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 no, 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 Arnold, this is on me. Uh, no, 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 it's been my pleasure, sir. Captain, can you find our waiter for us, please? And I hope we meet again very soon. Cantrell, mother. Oh, I'm sorry. And you'll be seeing him tomorrow. Tomorrow? Oh, he's going fishing with us. Tomorrow? Isn't it all right, Daddy? <laughs> it's his boat. <laughs> well, we can always use an extra hand. Oh, we oh. shove off at seven. Oh, thank you very much. glad you're going to join us early. I can't Bell go Bell Harbor Yacht Club. Seven o'clock. How can I go tomorrow? I can't go tomorrow. Go tomorrow. Really? Can't go tomorrow. really? Lana? Lana, you up? What do you want? Did you hear? Did you hear? Did you watch the news? We were in a big accident. Wilmer was driving me over here about 8.30 when a big oil truck plowed right into us. I'm all right. I just got shaken up a little because I had my seatbelt on. But the truck is still burning, and Wilmer's car is a complete wreck. A complete wreck. Hey, check me over at Miami General. I'm all right. I don't want you to worry. I'm perfectly all right. I didn't hear anything about any accident. That really surprises me, because there were reporters all over the place. 
You oil companies must have paid them off to keep quiet. My back is a little sore. Wilmer may lose some teeth. They're not even sure yet. The truck plowed right into us. Incredible. What Wilmer does have is a terrific lawsuit because there were 10, 15 witnesses. I have to be in court tomorrow at 7. 7 o'clock? What courts open at 7 o'clock? Florida courts open at 7 o'clock because of the weather down here. No use you coming because I'm going to be signing affidavits and things all day long. My back is really sore. I sat here all night. You could have called me or something. Honey, how could I call you? I was pinned behind the... Yeah, I was pinned in a 68 Chevy. I mean, it took him an hour to, to get us out. How could I call you? Were you really in an accident, Lenny? You think I'm making it up? My God! My God! You think I'm making it up? Talk to the patrolman who pulled me out of the car. No, Talk no, to no, Patrolman no, Greer, no, the no, man that no, pulled no, me out no, of the no, car. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. My I'm God. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm lucky I'm alive. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean any of this. Get out. Good night, Lyle. Good night, Lenny. Tell me the best three days of my life. I think we'll come back here on our honeymoon. What makes you so sure there's going to be a honeymoon? I told you, don't underestimate me. Don't underestimate Daddy. He still doesn't like you. If he told you to drop me, what would you do? Drop you. You always do what your father says? Lunch. I'm coming, Daddy. Be right there, sir. Okay, listen. Tonight at your hotel, 7 o'clock, your father and me over cocktails. I lay my cards on the table. He finds out I mean business. Yeah? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's been a terrific three days. Three days? Where do you get a load of the next 40 or 50 years? I'd like to know how you got such a gorgeous tan if you've been in court since 7 o'clock this morning. Oh, honey. Do you think the law moves that quickly? I mean, in Florida? There were three cases before us. 
And then they had a recess. And then I wasn't called as a material witness until 2.30. And all that time, I was out sitting on those dumb, hot courtroom steps. I mean, it was a complete waste of a day. Do you call this a honeymoon? Do you know that I haven't seen you for five minutes since we've been in Florida? Oh, honey, it, it's not its not the amount of time that you spend with somebody. It's, it's how the time was spent, and I, I feel it. I'll, I'll, I'll never forget these three days. Where are you going now? Honey, honey. Honey, I've got to, I've got to visit Wilmer's family. Wilmer keeled over signing an affidavit. The man has three broken ribs. They rushed him to the hospital. He's not going to be do, doing much charter fishing for a while, so I just thought I would go and lay a hundred bucks on his wife and kids. All right, well, listen, can I go with you? Honey, Shantytown. The man lives in Shantytown. You can't walk through Shantytown this time of night. I wouldn't want to walk through if I didn't have to. Sweetheart. What about dinner? Dinner is 9 o'clock. The Florida lobster and a terrific Florida pecan pie. Something very big has come up, and I, and I think maybe tonight is, is a good time to discuss it. Something good? It could be very good. It, it all depends on how you want to look at it. You know, I certainly appreciate the way you and Mrs. Corcoran have treated me these last few days. I, I mean, after all, I'm a veritable stranger, a veritably unknown, and here you and Mrs. Corcoran have generously treated me as though I, I were practically a member of the immediate family. Uh, Kelly said something about uh, you're laying your cards on the table. Were those your cards? Or... No, no, I ju I'm just kind of shuffling that. Uh, this is actually my deal now. Um, <clears throat> well, uh, you know, and just, just plain old-fashioned corny lingo, sir. Uh, I have fallen head over heels with your Kelly here. Uh, it just, you know, it didn't take me long to make up my mind. One good look did it, actually, if you want to know the truth. But uh, I'm the kind of crazy hairpin that just doesn't need much more than that. And then that's it for life with me. Now, there is a slight complication. Uh, I happen to be a newlywed. Um, I, uh, I made the big mistake about five days ago in New York. Uh, and when I say big, sir, I mean Radio City Music Hall big. Um, you may have seen her around the pool. She's a, a nice girl. Um, but just uh, not, not, not really my type. Uh, I married her because I, I thought it was the decent thing to do. And I've learned that uh, decency doesn't doesn't always pay off. Uh, so I, I'm, uh, I'm going to uh, get out. Uh, it'll be difficult, but not impossible. Not, not when you're as determined as I am. And sitting opposite you, Mr. Corcoran, is probably the most determined young man that you have ever seen. <laughs> now, I, I know that you, you are going back to um, Minneapolis tomorrow, and it's my plan, just as soon as I uh, work out this messy business here, to uh, to follow you out to Minnesota, to uh, get myself set up there, and to uh, lay claim to your, your lovely daughter here. Um, those are my cards, and uh, Mr. Corcoran, there's, there's, there's not a joker in the bunch. Now, having... Uh, Spoken my piece, I, I, I would like I would like to know, uh, in all candor, how you feel about what I've said, and uh, to ask if I have your approval. Not if they tied me to a horse and pulled me forty miles by my tongue. Well, sir, that's that's an honest answer, sir. Mm -hmm. Not if they hung me from a tree and put a little bomb in my mouth. I respect your frankness. I think we understand how we, how we stand now. It's not a question of my not approving of you. It's a question of... 
I don't like one goddamn thing about you. Uh, well, uh, initial judgments very often are misleading. See, I found that out to, to, to my uh, sorrow, sir. Now, you come hanging around my daughter on your honeymoon? Dwayne. Hang around your wife. Don't hang around my daughter. Dwayne, you're shouting, dear. Please. Five days he's married, for God's sake. Five Shut days. Up. Darling, please. Where's the respect for the institution of marriage? See, once I get rid of my mistakes, sir, I'm willing to show you all the respect that you would like. Uh, get him out of here. Get him out before yeah, I dear. take him into the men's room and break all the respect You've in his body. You've made your point now, Dwayne. In other words, if I may, sir, in other words, what you're saying is that uh, if I want Kelly, I'm going to have to put up a hell of a fight, then. Is, is, it, is that... Uh... He's a nut. He's some kind of a goddamn right. Get him out please, of here. Yes, dear, please, now. Get him don't, out. Just don't get upset, dear. The, the... Maybe, maybe this isn't oh. the proper time to discuss this. Uh, Mrs. Corcoran, I hope that you, you will be able to see my position in this thing. And Kelly, uh, uh, perhaps look for me, because I'm, I'm coming. Uh, you stay uh, away from her. I don't hand out my daughter to newlyweds. Yeah. Well, thank Why didn't you go to Niagara Falls like everybody else? Thank you. Thank you for everything, sir. And, and look for me, Kelly, because I'm coming. Uh, I, I'm coming. You stay the hell out of Minnesota, you Dwayne. goddamn newlywed. Thank you. Dwayne. What am I talking to myself? <laughs> you eat four shells. <laughs> <laughs> is it terrific? Is it terrific? Did I exaggerate? Is it worth waiting for? It's fantastic. Okay, now. Save some room for that great pecan pie, right? Yummy, yum pecan pie. Pardon me, sir. Lenny, are you going to tell me something that you want to discuss? Listen, Lila, it, money is the last thing that you should be worrying about tonight, really. Just enjoy yourself, enjoy your dinner. You know. I am. I really am. What is it, Lenny? What did you want to tell me? Hmm? <clears throat> Pardon me, sir? I'm afraid we're a little late with the pecan pie. Chef tells me we ran out about 10 minutes ago. Would you like to order something else? Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> what are you, is it, are you joking? What, how's it, no pecan pie? Honey. Sorry, sir. No pecan pie? Honey, what are you doing? Do I have <laughs> I mean, the main reason we came here is for the pecan pie. Oh, that's all right, honey. No, it's not all right. I mean, they should have said that to us at the door. I mean, they should have warned us that there was a danger of running out of pecan pie. Well. There is one small piece left in the kitchen. Would you want that one piece? We also have some excellent blueberry pie. I mean, we drove all the way from New York. Listen, take it. Take the pecan pie. We can share it. I don't want to share it. I promised my wife the pecan pie. I want you to bring the pecan pie for my wife. I promise, just bring me some coffee. No blueberry pie? What do I want any blueberry pie for? Yes, sir. It's not a reject, is it? I mean, it's a perfectly good piece of pie, right? Yes, sir. It really bugs me, boy. No, no, I mean, I've been talking about that pie as far back as Virginia. If I'd have given him 10 bucks, you'd have pecan pie flying out of your ears by now. They got it back there. Honey, I'm getting the pie. I'm very happy. Lenny. Tonight's been the best night of our whole trip. Hasn't it? Aren't you happy tonight? See, that's, that's part of what I wanted to talk about. Um... You 
know you pay these kind of prices. The air conditioning is faulty in here. It's just... I think it's probably your sunburn. Go on, Lenny. What were you going to say? No, I was just... I was just going to say that... Uh, um... That, uh... What are we sitting on on the hot courtroom steps this afternoon? Uh... I was thinking that in three weeks, you're going to be 22 years old. The 12th. Right. And the really fantastic thing about being 22 years old is that you have your whole life in front of you. I know. We both have. And, I mean, the people you could meet, the places you could go to, things that you could do, it's just... Lenny, I never thought that I'd get to Florida. That's right. I mean, what some women would not give to be 22 years old. It's just a... That's right. I know it. To go when you want to do, to live. To live. Do you know what I mean? To live. Is that what you mean, Lenny? We only pass through once, right? I mean, we can't squander it. No matter what happens, we... She's passing this way but one time. We can't squander it. Once is a lot. Once is a whole lifetime. That's why we have to use and learn from anything that happens. We have to learn from the good, from the bad, from the happiness, from the tragedy. We have to learn. We have to use it all. To use it all. You're so deep, Lenny. I never knew that you were so deep. Do you sense at all what I'm trying to uh, say? Um, do, do you, uh... Oh, Christ, it's so hot in here. Is it hot in here or is it hot in here? <laughs> I don't understand. What, is, what are you trying to tell no, me? No, I mean, I'm getting let me, nervous. Let me, let me. I'm trying to say. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to prepare ourselves for anything, you know? I mean, everything could be terrific. The world could be singing. And then suddenly, suddenly for no reason at all, it's over. It's it's over, Lila. Oh my God. Oh my God, Lenny. I think I know what you're trying to tell me. I, look, I didn't want it to happen. I didn't plan it. You're good. You're good. You deserve better than me. You deserve much better than me. I didn't want it to happen. I didn't plan anything like this. Oh, Lenny. Oh, Lenny. Oh, my God, Lenny. <laughs> oh, Lenny, you're dying. Oh, Lenny, you've got something and you never told me. Oh, Lenny. I'm not dying. Who said anything about dying? I want out of the marriage. I went out of the goddamn marriage. I'm gonna throw up. Listen to me, listen to me. We're not right for each other. We're not right for each other. It didn't work out. I tried to tell you as far back as Virginia, but you couldn't see it. You were too busy yelling pee-pee every two minutes. Lenny. Make it to the bathroom, no, please. No, 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 I listen, listen, no, listen to me, please, listen to me. Listen oh, to me. Listen, isn't it better it happens now than in 10 years from now when we got three or four kids running around? Please pay attention. I don't want to have to say this a second time. Lenny, Lenny, Lenny I'm going to do it on the table. Drink some water, please. I think people are starting to look at us. Okay. Oh, God, Lenny, please okay. help me, okay. Lenny. Okay. Honey, I don't want to do it on the table. Okay. okay, take it easy. No, just take it easy. Take it easy. Okay? 
if we could settle settle this 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 tonight you know because you know checkout time is is 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and unless unless you want to stay on for a couple of days and, and then and then you know I'll work that into the settlement I mean, it's, it's just, you know what I feel I feel that we're over the worst of it now I I, I actually I feel closer to you right now than, than than I think we've ever felt before, you know? Sometimes when two people experience a common tragedy, it, it creates a bond between people that can last a lot. You know what I would like to do? You know what I would like to do? I would like to have, that we should have dinner sometime, you know? And I think that then we could look back on all of this and we could see all the good, all the good that's come out of this. That's the way. That's the way I would like this to end. Wouldn't you? I mean, don't you think that's a good way to, uh, to look? appreciate this, Ralph. My mother and I want you to know we really appreciate this. I have office hours during the day, you know. I think speed is our best weapon, Ralph. In quick, out quick. That's what they taught us in the Army. An annulment is going to take from three to six months. If you want a divorce quick, she'll have to go to Santa Domingo. Santa Domingo? Well, she didn't have much of a vacation in Florida anyway. I wish you'd have let me discuss settlement. I could have saved you money. It's settled. It's settled. I, I, I gave her everything. I, all I kept was my savings bonds, $900. I could have done better for you. No, Ralph, I want it this way. I'm not looking to come out a winner on this deal. I'm, I'm willing to pay for my mistake. Of course, if she's willing to discuss it, I'll leave that up to you. The final papers will come through in about three weeks. The sooner the better. I'm heading for the Midwest. I'll send you my address. What's in the Midwest? Terrific girl I met on my honeymoon. Don't worry, I'll send you an invitation. 
Hi, Mr. Cork. Len Cantrell from Florida? I'm here. I don't expect you to let me see your daughter right off, sir, but I just wanted to stop by and let you know that I, it wasn't some wild story I made up in Florida. I have gotten myself free. Well, I've got to run now because I uh, get myself set up. Please, please, uh, say hello to Mrs. Cork for me. And would you please tell Kelly that I've got myself a room at the No Way Motel? No way motel. Good afternoon, sir, and I hope I see you again very soon. Castro. Sir. You show your face here again. I'm gonna kick your ass right over the Canadian border. Here. I made it. I heard. You must be crazy or something. I'm out. I'm free and clear, just like I said. Hi, Kelly. You must... Hi. You must have been crazy just ringing my bell like that. What's the matter? What's... Hi. I can't talk to you now. I've got political science. What are you talking about? Political science? We have serious things to discuss. Look, I'm very flattered you came, really. But the situation's Kelly. impossible. Oh. All right, just a minute. Um, Hello, Kelly. Hi. I've got to go. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you worried about your father? I mean, I'm going to handle that. My father says that if you're not gone by tonight, he's going to get you with his car. I have to listen, go. Listen, Kelly, listen. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm real surprised. I'm surprised by your reaction. I mean, I'm really very surprised. Pick the bad time to come. A bad time? Hi. Do you remember Florida? I mean, does Florida seem vaguely familiar to you? Certainly I remember Florida. I'll never forget it, but this is Minnesota, and I've got political science, and I've got to go. I'm really very flattered. Guy in that mind.
Kelly? Kelly, I gotta talk to you. I'm sorry, I've got English lit. That's all right. Listen, I just need two minutes to talk to you in private. Hey, what? Didn't you hear what she said the first time? Certainly I heard what she said. I'm only standing a foot away. How could I possibly miss it? I just need to talk to you in the car for two minutes. Hey. It's OK. I'll see you in class. I mean, what did you think it was, a game? This is no game. This is my life. I don't play games with my life. You really got a divorce. Oh, you think I was just really fooling around with you in Florida? Didn't I tell you I was going to get a divorce? I don't play games with my life. Gee, I'm really flattered. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. I was really under the impression that our relationship <laughs> was at a much more advanced stage than the point where you're really very flattered. I mean, I just gave up a whole goddamn marriage. Well, you caught me off guard. It's my first day back at school. I've got English lit. Oh, you know, screw English lit. I just gave half my life away. I mean... You don't even say hello to me. Where's your, where's your, your goddamn laugh? I haven't heard your goddamn laugh uh, one time since I've been here. I can't help it. Florida seems like such a long time ago. It's two weeks ago. What, you can't retain a memory for two weeks? I gave up $6,000. I gave up... I gave up my wife. I gave up my car. And you can't retain a memory for two... What are you... Are you... Re what was all... What was all that... You're sitting on my stool. That's my spot. You're sitting on my... What is all that crap? I mean, really, this is just a bunch of crap. And I'm a schmuck! I was very attracted to you. Oh, were you? You were very attracted to me. You were very attracted. That's, that's cute. No, that's a real, that's a cute thing. And so, so I was, uh, something to, to do. No, I, I, I can understand that. I can, listen, what is it? I, I got a crummy divorce. What does it mean, right? I also got a suntan. I mean, you really have to look at it that way. That's the way life is, good and bad, you know. Well, the important thing is that you get the English lit. I think that's really the important thing that we, we do here. Hey. What? Don't get so morbid. Give a girl a chance. Is this how they kiss in Minnesota? Mm -hmm. I'm getting the house this afternoon. First, you have to take me back to English lit. What time is your last class? Pick up part up to your last class. Well, it's at 2.30, but I don't think I was always supposed to meet someone. What, the guy with the big neck? <laughs> that guy's got a 48-inch neck, you know, <laughs> he's finished. That guy is through. That's over, really. Lenny is here. But I wouldn't start in with him. He's captain of everything. I spent three years in the armed forces. That guy is through.
Kelly? Kelly? Listen, I'm getting sick and tired of you bugging Kelly. Yes, I understand your feeling. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Leonard Cantro. I'm with the Department of Justice, the Bureau of Narcotics. And I'd just like to ask you a couple of questions. May I see that cigarette, please? May I see the fact that came out of it? Want to just step back there a minute, please? You a student here? Yeah. What year are you in here? Sophomore. Mm -hmm. What's your name, please? You don't need my name. Sam, I don't want to have any trouble here. Just ask your name. No. What is your name? What is your name? <laughs> now, see, apparently that fellow has something to be frightened of. Do you fellows have anything to be frightened of? No, I don't. Uh huh. How long have you known Miss Corcoran, please? About, about two years. Two years. To the best of your knowledge, has she used drugs of any kind? No. You boys have any reason to run? No. I don't. Well, then why don't you just walk, then? Just walk on. You tell your friend I'm coming back tomorrow. Thank you, fellas. Just keep your nose clean. Kelly, keep moving, please. Where? I mean, you, you want to suggest a place wherever you want to suggest. We have a summer cabin in the mountains. It's not heated, but we could have a big fire. All right? Cabin. A cabin. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All my life, I dreamt of a cabin, a fire. Have you got the nerve to try something very dangerous? What do you think? I mean, what do you think? We'll have to take off all our clothes. OK? What a terrific idea. Whatever it is, I love it. Remember, I'm not going to sleep with you. That's all right. Even if we just did this, it would be terrific. I've never done this before. A girlfriend told me about it. I love her. Whoever she is, I love her. Come on, I'm way ahead of you. Let me help. Oh, no, no, no. That's the whole point. No touching. We take off everything and get as close as we possibly can without touching. It's a lot harder than it sounds. I love it. I love it. All my life, I wanted to be in a place like this with a girl like you playing a game like this. Come on, hurry up. Let's play. I don't know if I can go through with it. Oh, yes, you can, sure. I mean, it's just a game. The worst thing that could happen is you'd lose. All right. Step back a few feet. One more foot. Why don't we begin? Why don't we... Should we just start? All right, I'll go first. Okay, now you. Now what do we do? We just walk towards each other and see how close we can get, but we mustn't touch. I think we're close enough. No, um, I think we could get a little close. You do? 
I do. I honestly do. My father misjudged you, Lily. I really do. You're the most decent, honorable man I have ever met. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. I'll sleep with you tomorrow night. Oh? Oh, I'll be back about 11. Or some books for class. Don't wait up. I knew it could be like this. Never was like this. I knew it was possible. Don't let me fall asleep. I have to be back by 11. I knew I wasn't crazy. A lot of people might have thought I was crazy. But I knew, I knew it. I, I think I'm going to surprise a lot of people. I know one who's going to be surprised. Don't worry about your father. Your father and I are going to understand each other. It's, it's just a question of us sitting down together. I love listening to you. Positive about everything. Daddy's the same way. You like that, huh? I love that. I don't want him in this house. I don't want him in this town. This is my house. I pay taxes in this town. I don't want him in my town. I don't want him in my house. Well, why not, Dwayne? Because I hate him. That's why not. But despite that, Kelly says he's an admirable young man. Well, can't you at least see him? For me, Daddy? Please do it for me. I understand you're quite taken with this part of the country, Mr. Cantrell. Uh, Leonard, yes, ma'am. I like what I see out here, and I like what I breathe out here. And I've, I've just about made up my mind that I'm going to make this my home. Oh, well, from what I've seen, I'd say you're a very determined young man. <laughs> <laughs> I take that as a compliment, Mrs. Corcoran. I don't mind saying it. This is one of the finest meals that I've ever had. Oh, thank you, Leonard. It's simple, you know. Mr. Mr. Corcoran doesn't really care for fancy food. Though I imagine you've tried just about every kind of exotic dish in New York. Exactly. You? See, that's, that's the trouble. It's exotic, but it's not honest. I mean, it's fancy, but it's not, it's not real. I mean, this is honest food. There, there's no lying in, in that beef. There, there's no uh, insincerity in those potatoes. There's no deceit in the cauliflower. This is a, a totally honest meal. You don't know what a pleasure it is to sit down this day and age and, and eat food that you can believe in. Oh, oh what an original way of putting it. <laughs> Leonard's so positive, isn't he, Mother? Who does he remind you of when he's so positive like that? Who, dear? You know. Oh, yes. Oh, my goodness, why didn't I notice that? Oh, of course. <laughs>
Tell me, Leonard, have you given any thought to what your future plans might be? I've given it a lot of thought, Mrs. Corcoran, a careful thought. Uh, I thought, actually, I would like to do something that concerns the land. The land? Oh, you mean, you mean farming? Farming? No, I don't really think so. And yet, it's hard to say. You see, I want to get back to origins, to, to basics, you know, back to the soil, so to speak. So many young people today are, are going in that direction, concerned young people. I think we've taken enough out of this country. I, I believe it's time that we started to think about putting something back into this country. Oh, you know that's very well put, Leonard. You know, I read an editorial in the Minneapolis Star this morning that said the very same thing. Really? I didn't see that. <clears throat> Can I get you something, Dwayne? No, thank you. I wonder if you ladies would allow Mr. Cantrell and I a few moments alone. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course, certainly. Mr. Cantrell? Excuse me. Sir, thank you. I don't smoke. Leonard. Sir. I was very quiet at dinner tonight. Because I was listening. I'm in the banking business, you know, and I'm called upon to have many business dinners. I find I can tell more about a man by listening to his dinner table conversation than by reading all the books and the records and the balance sheets in the world. I heard everything you said. Your feeling about the big cities, the clear air out here, the honest food, getting back to the soil. And I will tell you, quite honestly, I was very impressed. <laughs> I'm very glad to hear that. Oh, I was very impressed. And I think I can also say, quite honestly, I have never heard such a crock of horseshit in my life. Sir, there's no deceit in the cauliflower. Where do you get ideas like that? They just, they just come into the New York head of yours? I was merely trying to impress the fact that it was a, a I, I pleasure see to through you. You don't think I see through you? You could wear two wool sweaters and a raccoon coat. I'd still see through you. I've never once tried to misrepresent myself or Leonard, deceive uh, anybody. I... Leonard, you think you're quite determined, don't you? You think once you get your mind set on something, that's it. Leonard. You don't know what determination is. I eat determination for breakfast. You want to see a brick wall? You're looking at a brick wall. I'm very sorry to hear that, sir. Did you honestly think you could come out here and wise guy yourself a girl like Kelly? Now, maybe you wise guy that football player away, but... This is my baby you're talking about. Nobody wise guys away my little baby. I have nothing but the deepest respect, love, and feelings you for... You want to talk figures? All right, let's talk figures. You tell me your figure, I'll tell you mine. I don't understand. You mean, what do you mean, money? Is that what you're using? Five. How does 5,000 grab you? I'm shocked. I am shocked. That you would even remotely suggest that I'm, I'm going to take some... I'm talking 5,000 tax-free dollars. Is that remotely enough for you? Remotely suggest that I'm going to agree because with Because if it isn't, I will go 10,000. Now, that's a lot of bats and balls, Cantrell. There's not enough money in all the banks of Minneapolis. 15,000. 
15,000. You're talking to a brick wall, young fella, a rich brick wall. In all the banks of Minnesota. Have you any conception of what $20,000 feels like, what it looks like? In all the banks of the United States of America. I'm talking hard cash, goddammit! Cold, hard American currency, 25,000 goddamn dollars. Look, Mr. Corcoran, I didn't come out here to negotiate for Kelly. I came out here to fight for her. I spent three years in the United States Army. I fought every goddamn minute of those three years. Unfortunately, not overseas because of a minor back injury. But in the small army towns of this country, against the narrow-minded, petty-brained bigots who look down on anyone who's nothing more than your average, hard-working, enlisted man. I don't want your money. I don't want your goddamn lousy $25,000. What do you want? What do you want, God damn it? I want Kelly. I want Kelly. Well, so do I. God damn it. Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God and signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Into this holy estate these two persons present come now to be joined. If any man can show just cause where they may not lawfully be joined together, let him now speak, or else forever hold his peace. Who giveth this woman to be married to this man? I do. after me. I, Leonard Allen Cantro. I, Leonard Allen Cantro. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make the light of his countenance to shine upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. So many people are so concerned with, with taking with taking things out of the country rather than making a contribution and, and putting putting things back in. Uh, you, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Well, I think you can get a lot of satisfaction from planting things. It's more like Thomas Jefferson, you know. Yeah, exactly. We were visited his home exactly. in Monticello lately. Yes. He said, uh, you know, the best government is the least government. And yes. His way of doing was something fabulous. The home he designed, very, very resourceful. What business are you in? We make uh, food for veal cans. It's a specialty kind of food. It develops uh, <clears throat> a European type of 
of a veal can. Uh huh. You know, I'm really wide open as far as uh, where where I might uh, go with that. You know, but insurance is a uh, uh -huh. is a field that's been with us almost since the uh, what company are you? The first. Uh, uh, oh, it's called Alexander and Alexander. It's a uh -huh. nationwide firm. Nation. Mm -hmm. The, uh, is, is that a going field in this area? Oh yes. But there's a lot of there's a lot of money in tear gas. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, but is your business oh, here. bring you traveling? Oh, here oh, we here are. Here comes the bride. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking all over the place uh, yes, for you. Just, I'll, be, I'll be with you in a second. I'm just. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to get back to, to origins. In fact, I think that, you know, many people, they don't think like this, but I think that we've taken enough out of this country in many ways, you know? I feel that all of us should think about putting something back in, you know? I'm in athletic equipment now, you know? It's interesting. What are you uh, interested in being when you grow up? Well, I haven't decided yet. How old are you? Ten right now. Ten? I was ten. Excuse me. Sure. Come on, Dean. Bless my soul, smooth your brow. I thought you knew by now. You're going far. You'll hit your stride any day, and you'll be on your way. You're going far. When it's rough, you got to hang in there. And it's rough, I know, cause I've been there like throws us in and it's either sink or swim keep your head look around do your best you'll soon be safe and sound and you can rest but till then keep your smile glued on time 